Welcome to your Human Design Mystical Way Analysis, Oren. As a heretical investigator on the cross of confrontation and an emotional projector with a dependable design of individuality, your spirit of success is deeply tied to your emotional clarity. As a practical leader in the mystical realms and metaphysics here on the material plane. Today, we're going to take a look at your way of processing your own mystical journey of awakening, which is shown by your profile in this life, the 5 1. The 5 1 profile is also known as a messenger teacher. 70% of our human design is in our profile derived from our incarnation cross, with its resonance showing our way in this world. You are here to unconsciously radiate emotional power to handle a crisis while you find solid footing with handling conflict, whether you feel emotionally stable or not. On the conscious personality side, you are designed to be a heretical leader someone who gathers together the tribe in order for us to be able to be guided in our walk through this world on the path of incarnation, where your leadership has a gift for expressing this direction of tribal law on the material plane. The drive for leadership may not yet have earned the right and yet when you are invited and emotionally clear, you can ground yourself in your adaptability where you have the power of memory, which maximizes the potential of your ego to attract others. Sometimes that can show up as the resistance of your egoist to adaptation. Now, your heightened individuality is an essential factor when it comes to an analysis in the mystical way. All of our designs are working just as we are, whatever it is that we are. For you, the individual spontaneous awareness of the now through the brainwave and the collective abstract emotional sensing of your emotional intelligence that you share, the feelings that you share on this path. How we move through the mystical way is deeply resonant with our profile where we make decisions from the uniqueness of our inner energetics using our strengths, our talents, and our gifts when it comes to embarking on this journey through life. We can discover the truth inherent within the nature of being by following our decision-making strategy, strategy and authority. Your focused energy and recognition of feelings will always light the way for you. So you have a powerful strength of knowing we call the brainwave. This is a design of penetrating awareness in the now and expressed in the now when recognized and invited. You have this really strong mutative energy dynamic, which can express the wisdom of recognition and awareness in the now, which transforms understanding into right action. This gives you the ability to transform your keen individual awareness for general application and empower other people's success regarding health, safety, security, physical well being, empowered knowing. So, suppose your intuitive clarity points to a problem that cannot be solved because of the circumstances. In that case, there is a possibility that you tend to get frustrated and angry, which can provoke inevitably futile action. Remember to wait for emotional clarity before making any life-changing decisions, what to do for work, where to go to live, who to love, who to bond with. Whenever you feel sad, moody, or melancholic, channel your energy into some creative endeavor that you enjoy so that it will help blow off the steam, the anger, the frustration. In this channel, you have the most evolutionarily advanced line qualities available, which take a lot of time to develop their 
maturity to a full flowering of their potential or wisdom. That is the sixth line. When you're 50, this channel itself is more aligned to maturity rather than immaturity. Now, there's other qualities about your design that mature fully over your lifetime that are very oriented towards not only individuality, but also the spiritual. Your unconscious mutating energy, it's evolving intensely in this life. And it helps you to learn through the rule of cycles in which decline is a natural but not an enduring stage. You can help change our collective experience of crisis by using your power to guide others to see your wisdom of justice and the inevitable survival of right. Your unconscious values and relating helps you pose questions about the patterns of others' reasoning that leads us to a more secure, solid future as you are here to be inspired by how all ends are beginnings in the spiral of life. This influence leads you to inconsistently value the logic of leaving old doubts behind and sometimes be illogical. With the potential obsession with old suspicions and mistrust, especially in romantic relationships. One of the inconsistent traits that we share right here in the gate 14 is possession in great measure. You happen to have both your Uranus there, one in line three on the conscious personality side, one in line six. We're going to click on that one. And this is the gate of power skills. This trait brings you the accumulation and retention of power through skilled interaction, coupling grace with control. Here's where you have immense unusualness, chaos, and innovation. With regards to your undefined sacral center, which is our energy resource function. The sixth line here is called humility. In your learning in this life about wealth and power at its most exalted. This gives us the enlightened recognition that material success is God's will. Spirituality as the key to acceptance and the source of power is something that we share. Now, when, because I have this in my design, so you'll feel the exaltation of that when we're together. But when you're alone, there's also the expression to the other side of the coin. It might show up as all manifestations of this position being essentially positive. The earth represents the existentialist recognition that material success was unavoidable and the humility engendered by such serendipity. Existentialism as the key to acceptance and the source of power. So those are some really important maturing energies that you have in your design. One more piece that we might just touch upon and that this is your Saturn, an exalted line because Saturn exalts this line of integrity. In your design, you have the gate 46, which is about pushing upward the determination of the self, good fortune that may be perceived as the result of serendipity, but derives from effort and dedication. This brings you the determination to say no to restrictive commitments to make sure that you're very clear upon your decision-making with regards to who you give your energy and advice and guidance to so that the interactions in collaboration with them are sweet and successful. Now let's dive into the journey of the mystical way. So the mystical way is a path right here that I'm outlining on the slides. You're going to see we're going to walk our way through this path along this journey. And you have both the beginning of the path and the end of the path, and specific activations that we'll discuss the influence of. I already briefly touched upon that right there. Within this path on this journey, you have very specific qualities of the path that you will resonate to 
when it comes to these traits or gates of this mystical way. And all of us take this journey, this adventure through life to awakening. So that's what we're going to be talking about now. Your particular mystic path, your design will do this in your own way. And what it means is that there's this layering on of the mystical path in this journey, mystical way roles that you have in congruency with what you are here ultimately to express as roles on the journey. So since you have these pieces, we'll factor that into your story. These aspects that you have present, just add another energetic nuance to how you are going to travel the path of the mystic. And because you resonate to the five in your conscious personality, we know that there will be vital elements of heresy to deliver truth. That's how we define heresy in human design. With your natal body graph here, we know it's crucial to wait for clear mutual recognition and invitation to provide practical realities that call others towards what is coming that they cannot yet see. And that all has to come from aligned rightness and integrity of interaction. Since you've got that fifth line in your profile, being a heretic means that you have a public role to be authentically unique. Unique is your key operative term. You're not here to condition yourself away from your uniqueness just to fit in, which you might have done as a younger child, young adult. You're here to stand out. All individuals very strongly stand out. So you have some strong individuality in your design. Instead of trying to fit in, standing out, and that might not be comfortable for others or the world, but you cannot mold yourself to others to avoid being challenged in the world. You can allow yourself to be dramatically different from others and just stand out because your presence calls us forward, calls us towards seeing big picture view and providing hope for what is coming. You know how both of your channels are projected, right? All of the strengths here in this mystical way are also projected as well. So they're all here to be recognized and invited out of you. Even though you don't have activations within some of the gates that are there, all of it, when it's correct, we're going to explore these lines of the way that are related to your unique profile and all of it, when it's correct, can be your way. So we'll begin with the first planetary activation that you have, which is in the mystical way, where your mystical path in this life literally begins with gate 19, your entry point into this life, where you have this as your unconscious direction and environment in the first half of your life, which you are still in as far as your age is concerned. This is the environmental frequency you're unconsciously designed to be attuned to. Gate 19 reads that all things are interrelated is apparent and manifested through the action of approach. I can remember how you contemplate how everything is interrelated. And that is where you start off in this life, the path that you're starting off on in this life. This is a gate of wanting in the Ravi Ching, wanting, gate of need, the pressure for us to need the communal bonding, bargains, ways of us dealing with the world that are about our tribe, our people. So you can feel how much pressure there is to need resources in your design. This is what a little bit what resonates to the way that you see the world, which is about wanting perceptually within your viewpoint. So feeling how much wanting, needing there is in the world to provide resources, to be available, available to provide for others. 
we can also see that you kind of have a an echo of that in the 41, which is about the pressure to desire. Here you have the almost the entire stream of feeling to desire, new experiences, new feelings, new adventures on the material plane. So it's a little bit of a similar energetic in that they're both root pressures, but one is reaching towards the pressure to find God, reaching towards the pressure to find the higher all that isness in the world and awaken ultimately as oneself. So the pressure coming up from the root to what you feel like you should have or we should have as a tribe since we're married, you know, your people you consider to be your tribe that you possessively <laughs> are a part of. This is the gate of revolution. Revolution is the gate of principles. We describe it as ideally the transformation of forms based on the highest principles and not simply for power. I find it interesting that part of your path that you're walking is taking you through soon your Uranus opposition where it is the cross of revolution. So that gate soon to be activated by the transiting energy. So here is a primary tribal element of the mystical way. Our mystical way begins with this stream of need. It's not about passion, desire, it's need. Your tribe, what our needs are and what we as a family need. People you consider to be yours, like you. So as a living your design guide, you know that the solar plexus system operates in waves. That's the only way we have access to this energy of the solar plex through that wave. Because here we have a ratcheting kind of triggering wave. And on this path, you may be highly attuned to and sensitive to other people's needs. So you're in this process of up and down with the emotional energetics of feelings, which you're not consciously aware of unless they get expressed because these are all unconscious traits. We call this solar plexus, you know, it's a potential awareness center, potential awareness up to possible expression traits. So this awareness comes and goes with the emotional wave. It's colored by this powerful, powerful balance between extremes that you have in your design with your conscious investigation and perception of hot-headed people expressing the urge to release feelings. You unconsciously communicate and think pragmatically. The pragmatism of the way that you express your feelings and your emotions. Though these feelings sometimes demand energy and expression, as we share the same authority channel, my influence on you swings to express the extremes of these qualities. So in your design, you have this relationship to feelings with so much energy involved. The dynamic field of potential awareness that moves back and forth from hope to pain in the emotional wave. You're on this path filled with need filled with need, people who are making mistakes in fulfilling the needs that are there, being driven, being pressured, always something they're hungry for, longing for, needing, wanting. This is a gate that is about flirting. There's the word flirting. This is the flirt gate. So people looking to get their needs for material resources met. You might be attuned to other people flirting in that environment, being open to flirt to get their needs met. The personality gets driven to call people out on the tribal requirements for help and protection that are not getting met. While unconsciously, your body might wonder and feel insecure about whether those needs, pressures, wants will ever be met. So remember, we don't really know with our minds what to do. 
what the resolution of all of these dilemmas that we are facing might be. So from your strategy and authority, always you'll find the key. That's what you have to rely on, your solution to any dilemma about the lack of resources in your environment and for the people that you care about and consider to be your own family. Be they bound to you by blood, by marriage, or just your recognition of them being your tribe by belonging to your fractal family. This mystic circuit is driven again by this pressure of wanting. And in that 19, in you, it's such such a compelling environmental placement. Ending with awakening, to be awake in this now as yourself in every moment, that is your mutative conscious wisdom. Applying understanding as part of the learning adventure in this life with regards to awakening. To be awake in the now as yourself in every moment is a conscious practice of contemplation for you. It comes to full maturity at age 50 and beyond. So the most magical thing about this supernatural adventure and experience that you're on is for the incredible individual knowing potential that is there, this intuitive awareness in the now, and your profoundly heretical expression of collective imagination at work in your design that you can share when recognized and invited. This pressure, this drive within you, this root is potent as a pressure and a fuel, not only to recognize needs and wants, but to imagine new experiences in the recognition of feelings in this collective journey that we have as human beings. So your mind is going to be busy with this pressure with regards to how to get the needs met, wondering and pondering about the interrelatedness of all things unconsciously and the principles that represent God leading us to higher principles, the something better that's coming in life, that is coming from your conscious awareness of what is going to lift us up all out of this world of need, the need of the tribe. First lines always have an undercurrent of fear in order to resolve the uncertainties, the unseen. Insecurity gives us this driving pressure to find the secure ground in life. The wondering, the investigating comes from that pressure. And going deep into it is correct for you when you have the energy to do so. So with mysticism at the unconscious foundation for you, it's about fear. So you can watch yourself get to the bottom of this story that is told about our mystic journey, our path to awakening, these social constructs within the tribe that tell us the good, bad, right, wrong, the rewards that come in the afterlife, and uncovering the foundations of fear that are there, always following strategy and authority to resolve any fears that arise, the fear of nature, the fear of holding traditional roles with regards to being a part of something greater than ourselves within the tribe. Your mind feels this pressure to put out a call to see the interrelatedness of all things. Remember, this is about going deep into the wonderment of the interrelatedness of all things when you're clear and invited, putting out the call to confront those things that are necessary to be confronted, to challenge the authorities and power so that You can stand up and defend fundamental human rights. This is about you attuning to your reasonableness when it comes to your perceptual awareness of what is wanted so that you can attune to where and when to lead your tribe with a guru-like awareness of what is going to be healthy, provide more resources for your tribe on this material plane. Your leadership helps resolve the pressure of recognizing the need 
and calling out to others to meet those needs. Your being is driving you towards that revolution, the gate of rejection. Either you're with us or against us, says this gate. The tribal principles of meeting everyone's wants and needs here will be that you unconsciously investigate that resolution of providing for everyone involved in the tribe based on what is going to be eventually considered fair as a fair bargain, as a fair deal. So investigating all of those themes as a first line body is your mystical journey. This is about moving from theism to anti-theism with regards to your profile or the way that you are motivated to action. So it's taking you towards your personal grokking or grasping of our connection to the mystical way and the journey that we all take as human beings. So you might amplify the fear of nature and the unknown consequences when we offer up our needs and see if they're going to be provided for or not. It concerns all of us on this journey, that fear. Personally, having observed you and lived with you in partnership for almost 10 years now, I know that when something scares you, you tend to examine it, face it head on by whatever means necessary to overcome any fear. I deeply admire that about you and know that this is an intrinsic part of the fullest expression of who you are. So you may deepen into a study of awakening to the life's mysteries through the journey that is taking us through seeking what is under the surface of our social contracts and our social constructs. Your ideas about what could bring peace may be hidden from you, but you're designed to be a realist realistic to, attuned to, in your approach to the collective, your imaginative approach to the collective, to find the potential awareness of how to alter the form through teaching the correct principles that provide for the tribe's needs. First lines, very strong teachers. While your mind will seek to find out how to alter the form, through practicality, and support your tribe with a message that universalizes the solution to the challenges we now face as a growing collective of digital tribes on this planet. I know from childhood, you were always observing, watching, studying behavior. What do you notice that needs to be put out as a call based on what you see is wanted based on what you know is coming? How can you lead from this authentic place when it's correct for you to share your feelings, your imagination, your heresy? So we've moved from this sensitivity channel of synthesis into community. So next along this way is the 37 with its fear of holding traditional family roles or tribal roles. Here is the gate of family and friendship. It's got this possible expression of affection, loyalty, warmth towards others who provide. It's also about worship when it comes to the hope of being touched by the higher power, God, what have you. Here you might question the way things are done. Do we have to behave according to the practices and traditions of our elders? Your fifth line personality has a devotion to tribal liberation. While your first line body leans towards following the traditions of the elders. So I can almost hear the heretic in you say, hell no, to following rules while the investigator in you takes its time to study, to uncover the unseen, 
and to ensure a solidity for new foundations that must be laid. We've come to this bridge in the mystical way, which is kind of outside of this mystical way itself. It's the bridge that we all have to cross, like a struggle point, a tension point, it might also be called. Can you make it across that bridge? Will you obey your tribal roots? Or will you break with tradition to spread your wings and individuate? I can see that you are designed to individuate. Your mystical bridge is bringing this powerful, principled support for the needs of the tribe. So that friendship and loyalty is meeting the gate of deliverance, a trait of aloneness, also known as the gate of denial. You can see that it's in the heart center, this heart center, which is not an awareness function. It's just a pure motor. What does it have the will for? Your undefined heart has an inconsistent will, but on this path and in this journey, following your emotional clarity will bring the right things for you to be best at, to encourage others to be better, the best versions of themselves. There's this emotional sense of believing in the 37. It brings all kinds of emotions that go along with it. This energetic, timeless dance between faith and tradition, friendship, loyalty, and then no, denial. And because you're unconsciously a first-line being here, you're studying what comes of behaving according to the conventions of the tribe. You begin to see what is unstable about those tribal rules. So you might struggle with those rules and recognize that there are problems with the traditions that are being upheld. When you investigate into the tribal practices this leads you to the potential of a mystical transformation that can be empowered not only by your individual awareness, but also your confrontation energy to challenge the tribal lawgivers and require liberation from the demands of your elders. Again, gate 40 is a willful ego trait, a mechanism for denial, where you can say there is no support here for this way here. There is no God with regards to a higher power that has control over you. In fact, I know from experience that you and I resonate with the expression, thou art God, that you are God. So there is no God outside of you, part of your heretical viewpoint. This 3740 channel of community, the design of a part seeking a whole, is about bonding over family traditions while we also feed our stomachs. I know that that's not something you're fond of. Instead of being pulled towards the 37, which is a natural perspective of what the 40 is looking at, you've already turned towards the possibility of true liberation, diving into deep mysteries of life and the school of enlightened selfishness that is the human design system. All of us are designed to be oriented towards liberation in some way, shape, or form in our spiritual journeys. To individuate, we all have to move through this path of denial, coming to deliverance and leaping out of the tribe into the unknown. Personally, I see you empowered by the challenge of being yourself as an undefined G center in a sea of individuals who act like sheep, not wolves, people who go along with the herd, fives or wolves. Now, I know from looking at your human design body graph, along with your family's body graphs, that you were born into a dysfunctional penta, which means that you are in an environment without every single gate represented with regards to your immediate family. 
you didn't have a two in your family and you didn't have a 13. So another thing that you were contending with as far as conditioning was every single other member of your family, mother, father, brother, all of them were generators with a defined G center. So you entered into this super strong conditioning field, encompassing the traditions of a military family as the son of a colonel. So you didn't have a choice when you were a little kid. This is what we do as a family. This is how we observed our traditions and bonded. And you are a great observer with regards to you know, studying not only the mysteries of life, but the mysteries of people and their behaviors. So you have studied, observed their psychology, obeyed the laws, respected the beliefs that were there until you were old enough to rebel and went on your own way. I know that when you were a child, you used to be terrified that mom and dad would just leave you because you felt like such a strong outsider that you didn't belong and that your brother preyed on your, those fears and exacerbated your older brother, exacerbated those fears. And that when you got older, breaking with the traditions of being a good boy and rebelling and fighting back, standing up to authority figures, definitely on the table for you with regards to your life experience, because that's where you're here to be influential so that you have this law that you can obey, that everyone is deserving of challenging the authority figures in their life and discovering the truth of who they are for themselves, being their own authority. So back to the mystical way, we are at this crossroads that's here because there is, like we could say, a pivot point and a leaving the tribe behind. We could continue up with the tribe, which is where you and I actually happen to bond. Or we could leave the tribe behind and go our own way. These three tribal motors that are here, one, two, three tribal motors that are here. It's a really strong force, powerful, powerful energy movement flow. So the tribe is about material wealth and resources, money. This is the channel of money. This is where we bond together in our relationship, material, creative art of enterprise and the material plane. But for you, instead of going to that ego circuit on this mystical path and in this journey, you have the courage to leap out of the tribe when it's correct for you, because our mystical way doesn't follow the money line up to the throat. It moves from the emotions through the heart and the path forks left into the higher self from the willpower. And this is where we make the journey from tribe into individuality, that shift to pure centering, centering within on oneself, there's a centering circuit. So we have this initiation into being and then coming up to the commitment to higher principles through the channel of awakening. So that's where your wisdom of awakening leads us. So we've made this shift. Your alignment with truth during your maturity of this life is about having the warrior's heart that can say, I do this for me. I'm here to awaken as a uniqueness to live every single precious moment, not under tradition, not under the guidelines of the rules, the elders, the family. For this, I'm here to confront those who would stand in our way, our as the voice of the tribe, but also in my way, because I'm doing this for myself as myself. The gate 51 is the gate of shock. As a 5-1, you can embrace this disorder, the conflict of emotion, the fear, the paranoia, all those shocks in life that are here for you to learn from. You can surrender to altered states of consciousness, release into that 
disorder and chaos and come out the other side. Okay. When it's correct for you to have that kind of shamanistic experience, the courage to leap out of the tribe and embrace the unknown takes a lot of guts, takes a lot of gall to do so. Strategy and authority will propel you into the right things that you can confront. Life's invitations of pure initiation move you through the challenge to face the unknown and to find the empowerment of knowing your place within the higher self in this world. Reaching from 51 across to 25, we find the archetype of the shaman priest in this gate of innocence, the spirit of the self. Now, fives say this energy that is there is drawing you to make a call, to tell the world. That's what fives do. Influencing strangers, having a high, strong impact on those strangers that you're karmically connected to in order to stand together with someone to confront when the truth is necessary, confront their demons that you see in them because you can see the demon that's writing them. Here in the 25, this is about recuperation for you as a five. From life's challenges, when we had the gall to leap away from the tribe into the love of just simply being, innocently being, existing, finding a place to love all that is, having a place to love all that is, loving towards everything as ourselves. Your fifth line says, I'm universalizing being. And this is being all that is in an uncontrived way, because that is what is correct for you as a first line body. This can mean that you're simply doing that magic thing that you love doing when it comes to making your artful sigils. You don't have to bring anything out of your magical nature into the world through words or writings. However, as someone whose purpose is fulfilled through guiding civilization, guiding manifestation, guiding the form through leadership, it may be that you create, you're very creative, create something. You are someone who can bring out magic simply by being present. Your presence, your living frequency, your aura, your physical expression of embodiment, your wisdom that is there when it comes to being wise about place and people and direction and roles and love, both love of self and love of all that is. You are celebrating the spirit of the self here keeping it alive as a pulsing presence within this aliveness of you being you unapologetically. 5125 is about, I do this for me. I don't have to know who I am for myself. I am all that is. I am the great mystery. I just know that I am being here now. This is the pureness of empowerment where you can have challenge and disorder and shock where this pure power of higher potential, higher calling, where you're holding your balance within the chaos, you can embrace that shock and disorder and come into the presence of being without having a defined role. Your role changes depending on the other that you're collaborating with, with regards to the correctness of aligned interaction, being wise about others' identity, love, and direction, accepting the extremes, being able to touch into the courage to love the body, treat the body like a temple, courage to honor the embodiment of this life, following the body as you say. I love using that in my teachings. So as a heretical investigator, you genuinely seek 
to go into the depth of what it means to be an initiate of the mysteries on the higher self path into awakening. Now we finally made it into the channel of awakening, a design of higher principles, commitment to higher principles, where remember you have the trait of the I am voice, that expression of I am. We begin with gate 10, the gate of behavior. And as a fifth line, speaking your heresy, speaking your truth about your behavior in the now. This is about self-love mastery, the love of self and the love of the world as it is. The acceptance of your place within the world is a wisdom potential. Your undefined identity has the wisdom of not only studying behavior, but also what behavior (laughs) I could say you could get away with without uh, damaging your reputation is what I recognize for you. And studying behavior, expressing your perspective on behavior is designed to break with traditions, be utterly unique. All fifth lines are utterly unique. So just being present here. You might be straightforward or not, to direct or not, as correct for your design in guiding others when you are clear, when it's correct for you. You're emotionally sensitive and potentially aware, intuitively, strongly intuitively aware of how to massage the words that you use to control or manipulate others' memory to dismantle the false illusions and delusions that they find themselves under with regards to their negative and false belief systems about themselves. Your gate 20, again, it's the most mutative of all planetary positions that you have, the most mutative line in all of the six lines at the end of the mystical way. Gate 20's expression is about your existential manifestation of the mystical process along the way in this journey through life. Six lines all mature very slowly, so a slow maturing process. And your expression as a magical, supernatural part of existence in this awakening process, definitely utterly unique with regards to how I see you. Again, 20 is called contemplation, the direction of the now. And what is profoundly mutative and empowering about you in your maturity is your voice of I am, which is learning contemplation that results in applying your knowledge to understanding. Transforming understanding into right action is part of what is deeply, powerfully mutative about you. You sometimes have this ability to transform individual awareness for general application for the mental challenge and the humor with which you spontaneously spout very wise words of wisdom has me in hysterics and stitches. Oftentimes you have this spontaneous laughter that you can provoke and evoke out of people when you just allow that mouth to run hitting the nail on the head with regards to seeing things in a uniquely humorous and different light, seeing the ridiculousness, the idiocy of life, putting a lighthearted spin on things. It's one of the things I love so much about you. So sometimes you enjoy this uh, expression here for the mental challenge rather than for altruism. Either way, when it's in right timing, it's it's hilarious. Now, awakening in every moment as yourself. It's designed to be an ordinary state, nothing exalted or extraordinary about it. It's completely ordinary, awakening to each moment as yourself. Your extreme in the rhythm and flow of your connection to the all that is the universe. You could call it the biverse. A mundane life that we live and yet there's all this mystery wrapped around it, all this wonderment and awe that is so profound. 
The supernatural reconnects us with the magic of existence, the magic of loving ourselves, our uniqueness as we are. This is the voice of I am, I am here. I am expressing my awareness of the mundane path where I share the magic of each moment in this empowerment of my form's embodiment, my form's existence. Fulfilling your purpose through form, through civilization, guiding the form, calling them forward towards what could be. We all take this deep, mystical journey on this path of awakening. And ultimately, only you can experience you and your truth, this life from birth to death. The mystical way shows you the elements that are there resonating within your form, vibrating within your form. Simply take what resonates from this, surrender to the body's correctness, surrender to your form, and experience the transcendent consciousness in fulfillment of what it is to be you. Now, this mystical way analysis is a generic genetic construct. There's so much more that we could talk about with regards to your Saturn cycle that you're going through, your Uranus opposition that you're going to go through in a couple years, and your Chiron return. I look forward to witnessing you continuing on in this journey with me. We have no choice but to play out the roles of the costumes that we wear. And we understand when we grasp these elements that are there, the intense tribal need, the expression of our truth. This is what we are here for, to separate into our own unique individual experience of this life and simply be present in the now. Being you is being a wise, empowered individual, a guiding power for the others in your life that you lead, people like me. I feel grateful to be someone who has watched you grow over this past decade so that together we have learned to support each other in living our designs. In living our designs, loving our designs, we love ourselves as mirrors of the other. Thank you for being in my life, beloved.